Am I an asshole telling my parents to pay me back my college tuition if they want a relationship? This one is kind of a, a rough one to, to listen to. Hey, I'm Larry Lawton, certified bad boy. I spent 11 years in maximum security prisons where I earned my paralegal degree. I might not be able to legally practice in court, but I can tell you who's the schmuck in any situation. Larry's court is now in session. So, we're gonna do these stories and they're pretty cool. Uh, I really do like doing them. I hear some crazy stories and I think, off the bat, something jumps at me or whatever it is. So I'll summarize a couple of stories and we're gonna check it out. We're gonna have a little fun with this. All right, guys, first one. Am I the asshole for not telling a guy what I do for work and letting him pay for my drinks during the whole evening? Well, this guy goes out with a couple of friends uh, and he's at the bar. Now, he's a software engineer but he's with a new friend, he meets a guy, and the guy never asks him what he does, and this guy is talking about his job. He just got a new job, uh, talking about being an engineer now. He had a previous job, and he's talking about, he went to a coding boot camp, and uh, now he got a job as a developer uh, for one or, one or two months ago, and he's all excited, and, and he's telling everybody about it. And uh, this guy doesn't say a word, he doesn't, this, this other guy, this guy, uh, uh, Nick, doesn't ask him, hey, what do you do for a living, what you do? And he's just, he's all excited, he got a new job. So I, I get that part of it. Uh, now this guy just went, went along with it, and every time they went up for drinks, he says, oh, you know, this guy says, you don't have to pay for my drinks. This guy goes, no, I got a new job, I'll pay for your drinks or whatever. And then at the end, uh, they, they're saying their goodbyes. He looked, his, this guy wanted his Facebook page. He looked up his Facebook page, and it says that he's a software engineer. So the guy says, well, well, you're an asshole. Why didn't you tell me you were a software engineer? You probably make more than me. Uh, and uh, you, you let me pay for everything. He was angry and he said he made him look like a fool. Uh, I, and I think he did though, and not me, but he's, this guy is saying he thinks he made himself look like an asshole, not him. But now her, his friend Grace and her boyfriend are on his side too saying that it would have, wouldn't cost me nothing to tell him early in the evening, and I only kept it to myself, my own entertainment. Uh, well, you know, it's hard for me to call you the asshole. If the guy asked you what you did and you didn't tell him or you beat it around the bush, then you'd be the asshole, but you didn't. You know, the guy kept buying you drinks, you kept telling the guy, hey, listen, I could pay for my own drinks, and the guy kept wanting to buy you drinks. I think everybody's blowing us out of proportion. That's, I don't think anybody's the asshole here. Uh, you're not. You're definitely not an asshole for not, you know, saying what you do. Because, listen, I lived in a lifestyle where I didn't tell anybody what I did. Uh, obviously, I was a criminal. I wasn't a software engineer. Uh, but even even with that said, listen, you don't have to tell somebody. Somebody could have said something, depending on how you felt. If you were doing it like and, and kind of looking down on the guy and stuff, that's one thing. But it doesn't sound like you were doing that. Uh, you let him buy drinks. Listen, I've been out a lot. People let me buy drinks that are worth a lot more than me. So uh, it's not about that. If you want to buy someone a drink, you buy it for the right reasons. You don't buy it because you're getting one back. I don't look at it like that. Listen, a good friend of mine told me he does this. He, he invites everybody to lunch all the time and he pays a lot of money all year until actually I came along and I helped pay for lunches and stuff. And he said, Larry, he goes, the reason I do that he goes, I don't want anybody to feel that they shouldn't come to lunch because either they can't afford it or uh, that they feel like they have to give back or buy me a lunch or something like that. Now, he's wealthy, but even if he wasn't wealthy, I, I, I'm not wealthy and I help uh, buy lunches now occasionally myself. Uh, but, I mean, I get it. You do that because you want to make people feel good. The guy who got the new job, you should feel good about it. Maybe you should still be friends and ask him, maybe what can you do to get maybe at a higher level and stuff, if you guys didn't burn any bridges, which I hope nobody did burn bridges. But in this case, I really don't think you're an asshole, and I don't think anybody's an asshole in this case. I think the people who could become an asshole is if they're holding this against you like you did something majorly wrong. I don't think you were trying to uh, get it for free drinks. You were, you were listening to this guy talk all night, you told him you'd buy drinks, and uh, he could have said, okay, buy your own you know, one time. Or he could have said, hey, what do you do for a living? Because he never did that, is that what you said? So I'm not saying you're an asshole in this case, and I'm not saying they're an asshole. I hope the friends who sided with him, Grace and her boyfriend, 
uh, don't think you're an asshole and don't hold anything against you. You should laugh about it. He should laugh about it. He should go out another time and say, now you buy me a drink, buddy. And I'm sure you would. So I'm calling nobody an asshole in that case. Next one. Am I the asshole for making my sister-in-law pay above average rent for one bedroom? Let me give you the basis of the story. I am 100% being petty here, but curious if I'm actually wrong. Well, two years ago, this guy's house burns down. Uh, he gets one month pay for uh, a hotel. It takes 11 months for the insurance company to pay for his house. He ends up getting it. Nobody got hurt. He has three kids. Uh, and the sister-in-law, he asked if he could stay in the sister-in-law's place. She says yes. She goes, I have two bedrooms. Uh, you can use them and uh, give me a hundred bucks a week and pay for your own food. And that's all cramming into two bedrooms. Well, she, he, he gets in there, this guy, and she does a bad thing. So she decides she needs 250 a week. Listen to this, that's a thousand a month now. For, and only one bedroom. So he has to live like this, five people in a bedroom, living out of uh, garbage bags, pretty much with their clothes in it, what they have. And they charge 250 a week, plus the food, of course, all that. That I shouldn't even be mentioned. I think everybody should pay for their own food and stuff. But now, all this lady had to do is pay her land tax. This is the sister-in-law. Now, before we even go any further, the sister-in-law is an asshole. The sister-in-law should have never did that. She told you what it was. She should have gave you the rooms. No reason to do that. Take the one room back. I don't know what, why she would have done that, and it was a pretty dickhead move. Well, two years later, the sister-in-law loses her house. She didn't pay her land taxes. Now, this guy's got a nice house. He's got a, a, a five-bedroom house. He has two bedrooms open. But listen what happened. So the sister-in-law wants to move in with this guy. So this guy says to her now, listen, said, sure, one bedroom, 800 a month, and you have to buy and cook all your food except separately because my daughter is a vegetarian. I shouldn't have no, no say in it. She looked at me like I had 10 heads and said that she and her stepdaughter should not be made to share a room when there are two extra rooms and stated she cannot afford rent of $800 while purchasing all her food in, on top of it. I said, neither could we, but we managed to cram five people into a glorified closet space while you were getting 1,000 a month and food stamps. Take it or leave it. She decided to leave. Am I being in a, a childless? Uh, depends on, on if, if what kind of relationship you want with this person. Yes, this person did you wrong. She was an asshole in the beginning, totally. But sometimes you don't have to be both assholes. Uh, you might want her to help out your sister-in-law, if, especially if it meant something to your wife uh, more than anything. Uh, if the room and the money wasn't as big deal as it, was to, it seems to her, obviously she needed it back then. She saw that you had it, had probably have a good job. So I don't know if you're childish, you should put it behind you. I never look at things like that. I always try to help people as much as I can, and it's not about the money. It doesn't seem like it's about the money with you. You're trying to give her a lesson. What I would do is sit down with them all, everybody. Everybody's got to communicate. You know, communications is the best thing we can do with people. And you say, listen to me, I, I'm not going to be the childless person you were back then. I don't know your freaking deal. I, I try not to make people feel bad or anything, but I would say, listen, you were a jerk back then. Look what you did to my family. We had five of us living in one room and, and you, you could have gave us the other room. You couldn't have charged us what we did. We were on, on that. We're all family. We should help each other out. Obviously, that's even better because she knew there was a date that you were getting out. I don't know the date that this woman was going to be getting out. Doesn't seem like she had her shit together if she couldn't afford the 800 and her food uh, for her and her, I guess her daughter, which would be your steps, uh, not steps, it's the cousin. But I think somebody's got to put things aside, sit down communicate and somebody's got to be the bigger person. You know, I try to do that myself all the time, try to become the bigger person. Uh, I think you could have. So I'm not going to call you an asshole. Are you childish a little bit? Are you trying to hold a grudge? I think you made your point and I think it was a good point to make and I think the lady needed a little bit of a wake up call. But now I think you could become an asshole if you keep keep this up. Uh, put it aside, put it aside, make, make amends, whatever happened, happened. Even if she got something else and that she don't want to, I think you should all communicate and, and get it together. Unless you don't want to. 
As I always say, just because a person is a family member doesn't mean you have to like them. Doesn't mean that you have to kiss ass and stuff. I, I believe in helping all people. Of course, I'm to help my family. But if I have a family member as an asshole, and I do have some, I don't really associate with them. Uh, it doesn't mean I have to. You got only X amount of time to live on this planet. And do you want to live it, you know, doing bullshit? I don't think you do. Uh, and I don't think anybody should. But I think you could try to put this one aside. I really do. Let's go to the next one. Am I the asshole for not letting my best friends have her wedding on my property after being uninvited? Listen to this. This guy's best friend is Carla. She's a female, 21, uh, 31, getting married to her, her fiance, Rick. Well, he used to date this Carla, but no, nothing is going on now. In fact, Carla went to his wedding. They have a nice property, and they offered to use their property for uh, the wedding because it's got a beautiful view, big yard, all that kind of stuff. So they asked this friend if he would uh, lend, you know, let them have the wedding in the back of the house, use the house for that, and he said, sure. You know, listen, Carl was my, yeah, I used to date it, but now this guy, Rick, who's marrying Carla, didn't know that uh, this guy dated Carl, which it doesn't mean anything. I don't know where this is coming in, but anyway, they, he ends up finding out, getting mad that nobody told him that he, she dated. Now that's on Carl, it shouldn't be on this guy. Anyway, they, they said, okay, he gets mad. He doesn't want this guy now who owns the property at the wedding, at his own wedding. And the guy says, well, you know, I'm not going to be at the wedding. I'm not going to let you have my house. And, and what am I supposed to do? What are my wife and I supposed to do? Leave? Let you have my own house? First of all, you're not an asshole. They the assholes for uninviting you. Secondly, there's a there is a, a, a liability issue. Somebody gets hurt on that property. Did you rent it? Did you not? Why weren't you there? A lot of other things can happen. Uh, what happens if there was a fire or something happened? I think you'd want to be at your own property. I can't imagine them uninviting you to a wedding and they still want the wedding after they uninvite you at your house, is what it says. That's balls. They're the asshole for that. I don't think you're an asshole at all. Because if I'm not invited to a wedding, I don't rent my property, I'm not gonna let people come to my house, do all this, use my house to get ready for the wedding, do all this kind of shit, set up, set, whatever's gonna be set up in this property, it's your property, and you're not invited to the wedding. And not only that, you're not making money, you're doing it as a favor, and uh, there is a liability issue in this whole thing. With that said, the people who uninvited you are the asshole. The guy Rick is the asshole for insisting that you don't come to the wedding. Even though Carla went to your wife's wedding, so you're definitely not an asshole in this one. And you can take that to the bank. They're the assholes for asking you to give them the house and uninvited you. Blew me away when I read that. Next one. Am I the asshole for getting mad at my tattoo artist who hid their initials in my tattoo? Well, this person uh, gets a tattoo, goes to a tattoo shop, tells them exactly what they want, they show them the picture, exactly the way it's gonna be, they set the price, they do it. The guy comes uh, uh, home and uh, they look at the tattoo and there's actually initials in the tattoo of the tattoo artist, AJ, which her name was uh, uh, Alice Trevor. So I don't get why a tattoo artist would do that without telling you, uh, without showing you. Uh, you ask for a partial refund, which is very, very reasonable. They buck it, you go to the owner of the tattoo parlor, and he gives you a full refund. And now uh, the artist is running a full smear campaign against you, talking about moving shops and all kinds of crap. My sister says I'm an asshole for pushing the issue, but I feel like at the end of the day, I told you exactly what I wanted, and you didn't do it. Am I the asshole? Not an asshole at all. Listen, I did a tattoo on Daniel Silva, and I kind of messed it up. He knows it, and, and I love the guy. He's a, he's a world famous tattoo artist. Uh, he did one on me. It's in a video. Uh, I love the guy, and and the guy's not saying to me, "Oh, you you fucked up my tattoo. We'll fix it." I think that tattoo artist actually should have said, "I'm sorry. I'll take care of that," and they can. There's ways of covering that up and doing something in that. And I would have done that instead of put my initials in somebody without their approval. Listen, a tattoo is permanent. These tattoos are permanent. They're on me. 
They can't come off unless I cover them up or that laser shit. I don't know how much it really works. Maybe it's gotten better by now. But no, you are definitely not an asshole for asking for a partial refund. I would ask for a partial refund and a cover up. Because why do you want someone's tattoo? Now, it's supposedly this special art that, you know, tattoo artists do that. Well, they should tell you. Up front, you should be told. Listen, this is going to have, this is a specialty piece. Can I, can I put my AJ in there somewhere? It won't be looked at. It won't, you know, something to, to show my artwork. You're paying for something. You are paying for a piece of art to be put on your body. No way should somebody put some initials in you so you're not the asshole at all. In fact, people were saying, your sister saying you're making an issue out of it. I would go to another artist. You got the refund, the full refund, but I would go to another artist and cover it up too. I wouldn't walk around with it. Let me tell you how, how I am about that. It's like advertising for people. When I get a car, a new car, used car, and they always come with the license plate or even on the back, they'll have a, the company, the car place, the dealership or whatever it is. And they'll put it, and I take that right off. Right off, whether it's the, the thing in the back of the thing, which usually stick on, you can take it off and buff it out. And, and uh, someone goes, why do you do that? I said, why should I advertise for them? You want me to advertise for them? Give me 50 bucks a month. I'll leave that, that, that license plate thing around it, or I'll leave that emblem on the car. I'm not your walking billboard for free. That's what you're asking me to do, is ride around with your dealership on there. I won't do that. Now, some people don't care or whatever. They like the people. They want to do it. That's cool. Like it or not, listen, I understand this. When I want to advertise with YouTube or something, I have to pay for it. Everybody does. And uh, obviously, I do commercials. I don't do it for free. Uh, but in my case, you're not an asshole at all. Uh, in that case, get it covered up. And uh, they should, that, that person should at least put it in the back of their mind and never do that again. Next one. Am I the asshole for refusing to get on a flight? Oh, this is a good one. My boyfriend's parents paid for them, my boyfriend's siblings and their uh, son to all go on a flight to Cabo uh, for spring break. Becky, his mom, hasn't been, uh, seemed to like me for some reason. She always makes me uh, snide remarks about my parents' blue collar jobs and, field in, and, and her field in nursing, which pff, one of the greatest fields in the world. Thank you for your service. Uh, we get to the airport, Becky's got seven other people, first class tickets, and me one coach ticket. She told me I, used to use, I, I should be used to it and she had a free coach ticket so I should, should be grateful for going. They all did their express check-ins and left me a long line where I think about what the heck's going on. Uh, I go through the line, she's crying, she's thinking about this. Now, Becky's son, which is the mom, Becky, Becky's son doesn't go with the girl, doesn't hang with her online, goes through and they're all hanging and stuff. Well, the girl really has a breakdown. I get it, I really feel for this girl. Uh, she ends up breaking up with the boyfriend at the airport and his mother was so embarrassed. I told her what a bitch she was. My boyfriend has been blowing up my phone saying, how could I do that to his mother and just back out of a vacation very last minute because the lady walked off the line and said, you know, fuck this. I'm not being treated right. She was crying. She was emotional. One of the carriage uh, girl when she was checking her bread, fell for her, walked her away. And you know what? She went home and uh, you're not an asshole. First of all, he's out of your life. If that was the greatest wake up call you could ever have. Greatest wake up call. Because you knew what was coming. This guy's either a mama's boy and is, he doesn't want to stick up for his girlfriend to his mother. So he's a mama's boy. And do you want that for the rest of your life? I think it was the greatest thing that in the world that happened because you figured out, listen, if this guy's not willing to stick up for you, to whoever, to your parents or not, then you can't uh, uh, expect him to do it down the line when you're married and all this kind of stuff. So you're not an asshole. You should have left. I would have left too. I would have said, go fuck yourself. I mean, it's not like I wanted it. I wouldn't have went. I would have known the deal and I would have talked to the girl, well, me as a guy, the girl. You should have talked to your boyfriend in this and said, what's up with your mom? And why does she hate me so much? And he said, ah, she doesn't. She showed she just don't give a shit about you giving everybody else the first class. Very wealthy mom, of course and not giving you the first class ticket uh, with him. Uh, the guy, the boyfriend to do the right thing should have said, I'll get you a first class ticket right now. 
and get you that first class ticket. And that would have showed the mom something. So I think the asshole is the boyfriend. Uh, the mom, forget it, she has her issues. You are not the asshole, and your best move you ever made was not gonna be with this guy, trust me. That, that's just the start of it. Next one. Am I the asshole for leaving my best friend and his friends stranded in an unfamiliar city? Let me tell you what happens here. This guy lends his trailer, uh, he has a pull, uh, I think about my trailer, uh, RV. He has an RV and a truck that tows the RV. He says, no, you can't because I'm scared of you guys setting it up, doing it, ruining it. How about I drive it to three hours, I'll go with you guys, I'll drive it, set it up and you guys can use the whole thing and uh, I'll be with you guys and, that, and that'll be great. Well, they get there three hours away. They set the trailer up, these people use the trailer. They lock him out of the trailer and he has to sleep in the truck that night. They go into a race, they go to these races and uh, they let him sleep in the truck and, they, and, and he, he, they said, ah, we can't help you or whatever. He's texting them in the, in the trailer, they're in there, they lock him out. Well, the next day they go to the race and what does he do? He hooks up the trailer, picks it up, hooks it up. Right when they're walking, because it's a big field, they're walking back, he takes the trailer and drives away. And they're running after him and he gets away, whatever, he leaves. Well, they're saying he's an asshole, he left them there, uh, three hour away, all this shit. I wouldn't have lasted that long. If they didn't let me in that fucking trail, I'd have been banging on that motherfucker. Maybe would have pulled it when them in it, uh, a little bit different than you. Uh, no, again, I'm not finding you to be the asshole here because what are you supposed to do? Fucking uh, sleep in a trailer again or not even be accepted and everything else and they're whatever they're doing and they're partying, whatever it is, they could have talked to you because say, listen, we got a party going on, we got to force them, maybe we're having sex or whatever, can you hang out? Listen, if you were cool, you would have said, fuck, I'll stay in my truck, you guys do your thing uh, and stuff of that nature. But you not to just not leave you out without telling you what all this shit. <laughs> I think it's funny what you did. These guys had to get a fucking ride from somebody's dad or whatever it was, which made me laugh like a motherfucker. These people, how do people treat other people who give them something like that? I don't get it. That's the asshole. But let me give you one point, and I'm seeing a trend here. People are not communicating, and they need to communicate with each other tell each other what is going on, how it's going on, and, and, and the deal here. Because without doing that, now, you fucking, nobody knows the real deal. Hey, they should have talked to him. Now, I'm blaming everybody there, but you're not an asshole. I would have did it probably differently, because I probably would have hooked that fucker up while they were in it and fucking started off and they'd be freaking out and then let him get out and say, you're all a bunch of jerk off motherfuckers. I'm lending you my trailer. This was the deal. I'm coming here to party and hang out with you guys and now you fucking leave me to sleep in my own truck? That's a dick. But somebody's gotta communicate that. Even in the morning when you get up, you let them go to the races. I, I couldn't have did that. I, I, I would have fucking been fuming sleeping in my truck that night and didn't know, doing all that. But again, it's a communication issue, so I'm seeing that in this whole thing. The next one. Am I an asshole for not giving up my second free seat next to me in the plane? Listen to this. This heavy lady, she says obese, she gets a, a, a flight, she has to get a flight, and she happened to, she bought, bought two seats. She bought a window seat and a seat next to her uh, so she could have more room, put up the divider and have more room. Listen, I'm a big guy, I know all about this. I'm not obese, but I'm a wide guy, so I understand uh, airplane seats. Anyway, she, these people, the girl has the outer seat, this guy comes and sits in the middle seat. And he's like, she didn't say anything at first, but he's pushing into it. And he goes, hey, can you leave? You know, I, this is my seat, I paid for it. The second seat. Guys, no, he says no. Call the stewardess, the stewardess comes and says, uh, hey, listen, sir, you gotta leave. This seat's, you know, purchased. Uh, and uh, the guy, guy ended up and they were grumbling, they were calling her like, I'm calling her a fucking fat bitch and shit. Well, listen, not only are you not an asshole, you're a good person. First of all, you bought two seats because you know how uncomfortable it is for people if you're very heavy to go, go next to you. I commend you for that. Secondly, you were trying to be nice. You know, not, hey, no, the seat's taken. I mean, he sits down and says, no, what are you doing, the seat's taken. Oh, nobody's here, no, it's taken, I, I go on it. I own it, I bought it, it's my seat. Sit your ass in both seats. But 
this guy's the asshole. And he, he's, such a, he's such a jerk off, he wants to sit next to his wife, next to somebody who's even heavy and pushing against them, and he's pushing against her, and it's not even his seat. Go back to your fucking seat. Man, people are, got balls today. I mean, I, I, again, because you're a woman, I think maybe he thought you could take advantage of you. Uh, he's the asshole, not you. You're definitely not an asshole. I commend you for even getting your own seat. Good for you. Next one. Am I an asshole telling my parents to pay me back my college tuition if they want a relationship? This one is kind of a, a rough one to, to listen to. Uh, let me tell you what happens. It's a, a rich family. So they pay uh, for, and they have three boys and one girl. And they're a traditional family. They believe the, the husband should work, the wife stay home and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that's not me and that's not 2022, but that's the way they believe. They pay for their son's colleges. They wouldn't pay for the daughter's college. Uh, and she ends up applying for a college, gets even a partial scholarship, takes out loans, does her thing, and she's now a, uh, uh, an engineer. She took engineering, hard, had to work, take on debt, and struggle. Well, my parents have, haven't spoken to me for years. I mean, that's pretty bad. I mean, I don't know where you're at. I, if they have the money, why they wouldn't want to see their daughter be self-sufficient if she had to be. Maybe they think they're going to take care of her because obviously they have a lot of money. Uh, she's now married and expecting their first child and now the parents want to meet and put bygones be bygones. This person says, hey, listen, you want a relationship with me? Give me my 100000 for my degree in college expenses, uh, just like they did for my brothers. My mom burst into tears. My dad said I was being serious. And he just left. Since then, I've been getting calls from my brothers telling me I'm immature and hurtful. You know, this one's a, a sketchy one. I, I don't know about an asshole, but I think you're doing the wrong thing. I think you're going to be depriving your own grandson or your daughter or child of a relationship with their grandparents, which I think is wrong. And maybe the brothers and sisters, which is the uncles and aunts. Uh, again, you should be proud that you did it yourself, more so than the brothers. Uh, you did it in your own. I'm proud of you for that. I think that's impressive. Uh, I don't know if you use your degree, how it's worked with your family, uh, but you're holding a grudge. So a part of me says you are the asshole on this for holding the grudge. No relationship should be built on money. Now, like I said earlier, if you don't get along with people, whoever they are, for whatever reason, I mean, there's people who abuse their own kids. There's, uh, you know, whether it's physical abuse, sexual abuse, whatever. And do you want a relationship with that person just because they're your blood? No, fuck no. How's that? In this case, I think it's, uh, you're just being an asshole because you want, you, you're putting a price tag on the relationship. If you didn't want the relationship, you say, you know, you know, listen, you have never been a parent to me or whatever they do. Obviously, they put a roof over your head and food in your stomach, educated you up to whatever college. Uh, and that's, that's to be commended from any parent. Uh, so... A part of me says you're the asshole because you're putting a price tag on seeing your grandkid or their grandkid. I kind of don't like that. Unless there was more to that story except that thing against you, I think you're the asshole in that case. That's just my opinion. And the last one. Am I an asshole for not telling my dad he isn't getting the inheritance he's expecting? Listen to this one. The grandparents uh, got a lot of money. Um, this guy, this kid's mother died at 16. The father married somebody else. The grandparents did not like their new daughter-in-law. Even when they had kids, they didn't like the daughter-in-law. Nobody warmed up to the, to the stepmom, if you want to call it that. Well, my father has been banking on his inheritance for a while. He's even been not paying into his retirement because he's so sure he will be inherited the millions. The grandparents are very wealthy. I just found out Saturday that I'm getting the majority of the grandparents' estate. My father is getting a token amount of $50,000, so we can't dispute it. My grandparents made me promise not to give out any money after, and I intend to keep my, my word. But I do feel really guilty that my father just spends his money as it's coming, and because he's relying on money that he won't get. I found out my dad is in a lot of debt. Uh, no kid should be worrying about their parents. Their parents make stupid choices. I get it. He's the idiot. He's the asshole. You know, you're, you're only going with what the grandparents said, probably in a will, too, uh, that he doesn't get any money for whatever reason. You got to honor that. The dad, you shouldn't worry about that, so you're not an asshole there. 
Dad's got to figure his shit out. Obviously, with the stepmom and, and, and the other kids, who, where is that going? If he thinks he's getting that inheritance, nobody should expect an inheritance from their parents. Nobody. Whether you get it or not is another thing. Uh, you, you shouldn't expect anything. You really shouldn't. You should earn your own way. That's why I grew up. We didn't grow up with money. So we all had to work and work hard, whatever it is. I was a gangster at this, or what I'm doing now. I'm working 60 years old, doing what I can to try to uh, grow this and grow up things and, and help people as long, long as I can. Uh, but, you know, you're amazing that your grandparents gave you the whole, most of the money, which, uh, again, it's millions, and they gave him a token. You say token 50,000. 50,000 is a lot of money. Uh, but you got you to gotta stick with your grandparents' wishes. They gave you the money. Now, I don't know what kind of relationship you have with your dad uh, right now. If you have a decent relationship with your dad, you might want to put a few of them dollars away for a trust for him since he's bad with money so he can get a little bit. I don't know what you're doing for finances. You could put X amount of dollars and he gets a check every month, maybe help him out. I would never take it from my kids, uh, but you know, you might want to do that if you got a good relationship and you got a lot of money uh, inherited too. So, uh, but be smart with it and, and honor your grandparents' wishes. So you're not an asshole there, but I think maybe you want, you want to have a great relationship with your dad for your future and the future of your grandkids or his grandkids or your kids and, you know, maybe help them out. That's not a bad thing to do either. I think I kind of gave a pretty good idea of where, where I come from with all these uh, am I the assholes. Not many assholes today. Uh, just the ones that come, we get them in the uh, Reddit, we get them from the internet and, and I try to answer as many as I can. I hope you had a great day. I hope you please stay safe. Have a great week. Make good choices, everybody. That's what it's about. I always say that and I mean that. Try to help somebody as well. You know, when you help someone, you're pretty much helping yourself as well. Have a great day, everyone. Please stay safe. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Check the links below. Pass this around. Don't forget our podcast. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe.